Hi, I'm Jonathan from Michelle Audio. Today we're going to do a walkthrough and setup of a Michelle Audio Orb SE turntable. You need to give yourself plenty of room to set this up. You're going to set it up in situ, so we're not going to move it around after it's been set up. So you need to give yourself plenty of room in the position that you're going to set your turntable up today. So we're going to start with the base, spider base of the turntable and the three feet. You need to screw the, screw the three feet onto the legs. Don't tighten them onto the legs as these will be used to level the base once we get it in position. You need to locate the, the rear leg of the turntable. The cable tie saddle underneath the spider is what denotes where the rear leg is. That will be where your cable tie your tone arm cables later on. So that needs to go to the rear. So place the spider in position, roughly in position. We can, we can move it around once we've got the rest of the turntable built up. But that's the way it will sit. So then we need to take the top part of the spider you'll need a flat bladed screwdriver. So the top part of the spider, these are your three suspension pillars. Uh, make sure they each have a felt protection washer. And the way this works is that this spider sits on top of your base spider, supported by three hardened spikes. Now what we do, when these are shipped, we don't screw the spikes down because obviously they can scratch pieces of the equipment. So you need to screw these either with your fingers or a flat bladed screwdriver. Screw them down so that just the cone of the spike is visible. So do that on all three. Like I say, just so that the cone of the spike is visible. We want a minimal gap really between the two spiders. So there's no correct way around for these. All you need to remember is that these spike, three spikes, these three spikes locate into the three dimples in these hardened pads on the other base. So you put that in there like that. We now need to level the spider using the three feet that we screwed on earlier. We're counting on you having a fairly level you get a certain amount of adjustment with the legs, but we, it's not, it's not uh, infinite. So looking at this, we need to go up on the right hand side. And then that's pretty good front to back. So just double check it with the level. And that will make it easier. Okay, now we've got the base roughly in position and it's nice and level. We now need the three suspension pillars. These are the chrome pillars with the threaded part at the top. There's a small thrust ball in the top of each of these pillars. It's held in with grease, but you just have to be aware that when you're unpacking them that it doesn't drop out. These simply push over the top of those. So this is a suspension spindle and this is a suspension pillar pushes over the top of those and it will not move freely because it's sitting on the three balls that are in there. We now need to put the springs on top of these. So we have a, a chrome plated spring which is now rubber coated with a plastic bush at the top and a PTFE uh, protection washer which goes on afterwards. So you screw the three sp springs into position. I like to just screw them gently to the bottom of the threads but not tight. Do that all the way around. And then just place the three PTFE washers on afterwards. Okay, we now put the chassis of the turntable in place. You'll need to fit the bearing to the chassis and then lower it into place. So that's the main bearing of the turntable. You remove the spindle 
from the body, but do it upside down. There's a small ball that's in there, which is held in with oil, but sometimes it can drop out. So just put the body of the bearing to one side for a second, and you're concentrating on the spindle. You'll need the chassis of the turntable. And you want to screw the spindle in from the underside of the chassis. And once it's finger tight, you just lock it in position using a coin or a big flat bladed screwdriver. Make sure it's nice and tight and that will stop it unscrewing once it's playing. You then put the body of the, the bearing back onto the bearing spindle. Just give it a quick spin to make sure it's nice and free. And then you can lower the chassis of the turntable onto the suspension towers. When you're placing this on, just feel underneath that the bottom of the spring base locates into the area in these two in the underside of the chassis. So now we've got the chassis supported by the springs and you're roughly in position. You can now work on putting the tone arm and arm plate in place. So to fit the, the arm plate, we supply three Delrin arm plate spacers and screws. So unscrew the screw from the, from the spacer and each spacer screws into the three tapped holes that are on the right hand side of the chassis. They don't have to be really tight, just finger tight. Um, it's quite a delicate thread so any torque put into there can snap the spacer away from the thread. So it's very important, just do them up finger tight. The reason we use these type of spacers is it, it decouples the arm plate from the, the turntable chassis. You haven't got a metal to metal contact between the plate and the chassis and it gives a, a subtle but it does give an improvement in the sound quality. So once those three spacers are screwed in, keep the screws to one side for a second and then you're ready to fit the arm plate. So before fitting the arm plate you need to just orientate it so if you look on the back side of your arm plate, there'll be a sticker with an arrow pointing towards a hole. That hole in the edge of the, uh, in the arm plate is the front fixing position on the chassis. And just before you fit the arm plate, double check that the, there's small O-rings in the tops of the spacers. Just make sure they're nicely seated uh, and not coming away. Then we'll place the arm plate in position. And the arm plate is then held in place with the three screws that were screwed into the spacers when we got them out of the packaging. We supply an Allen key to do these up. Again, don't over tighten them. They just need to be finger tight. So literally once they're tightened up, just nip them into place. We don't want to put any too much force through, which will snap the spacers. And we don't really want to deform that little low ring that we was talking about a second ago. So that's your arm plate now fitted. You have a small aluminium finger screw, uh, finger nut, sorry, which will screw up from the underneath, but we'll just keep that to one side for a minute you fit that after you've fitted the tone on. So today we're fitting the turntable with a Michelle Audio Techno Arm 2. So this has already got the end stub and part of the counterweight fitted. Um, you need a VTA adjuster which is supplied with the kit which will slide onto the cables here and it sits between the arm and the arm plate and it gives you VTA adjustment for when you set your cartridge up. So this is the VTA adjuster. We literally slide that on. You need the, the dimple side up, so there's little recesses in the tops of the holes. Um, 
slide the phono cables through the hole. slide the VTA adjuster up into place and you pass the phono RCA cables and the ground wire through the hole in the arm plate and just gently feed them through. There's a second ground wire on a techno arm so feed that through the hole also. Now there's three Phillips screws supplied to fit the arm. What we're going to do is put these in place for now, but we will loosen them later. Again, these don't have to be tight, just nip them up. They don't have to be extra, extra tight. And we will be adjusting them later anyway. Right, now the tone arm's fitted, we need to connect the ground, short ground wire from the tone arm and there's a ground wire from the arm plate. These need to be in contact with the underside of the chassis. Now we connect them to the lowest portion of the suspension, uh, of the arm plate spacer, which is here. So put the two eyelets together, pass them both over the threaded section which is poking down and then we hold those eyelets in place with the small finger nut we talked about earlier. So that screws on. Now this does have to be quite tight but you can still do it with your fingers. We want to make sure that we've got a nice contact with those two eyelets to the underside of this. What we'll then do is dress the tone arm cables to the cable tie base, which is on the underside of the lower, lower spider base. So using the cable tie provided, we want to have a nice gentle loop in the tone arm cables here, but we want to prevent them from touching the supporting surface. That will take the spring out of the suspension. So we lift them off. We pass the cable tie through the base. and just use it to support the wires to stop them fouling on the supporting surface. and then you can get under there with some cutters and just nip that cable tie tail off. So we're nearly there. So we've got the tone arm fitted, the base is level and in position. So we're now ready to fit the platter. 
So we just lift the bearing body up, we supply a, a file of oil, the correct amount is roughly two millimetres in the bottom of this well. So it's not an ex you don't, don't need to be ex absolutely exact with it. Um, but fill the, the little well at the bottom with roughly two millimetres of oil. Put some on the top of the spindle, let some dribble down the side and a couple of drops in the body of the bearing. We then put that in position and give it a spin to make sure it's nice and free. If we've overfilled that well, the worst thing that's going to happen is oil's going to spill out the top. It's not the end of the world. You just need to mop it up with some, some kitchen paper. So now we're ready to put the platter on. The platter literally just drops over the record spindle. And then we have two threads on this record spindle. The bottom one is for the platter retainer, which holds the platter in place. So just screw that on. The orb clamp that this turntable is fitted with, um, the platter retainer has a convex surface. The idea is that that sits up under the center of the record. When you put the clamp onto here, it uses that convex surface to squash the record flat to the platter. We provide a, a ring which has also got a chamfered sort of convex surface. This is for use on very thin vinyl to aid it in flattening. That literally sits over the top there. It sits proud of the platter retainer in the middle um, just to aid it with those thinner records. Most of the time, you don't need to use this in normal operation. It's just for really thin records if you have a trouble getting them flat. The orb clamp has a thread in here which locates on that thread there. So when you put your vinyl on, you put that, screw it down, do it up nice and tight and it will hold the the vinyl flat to the platter surface. So we're now ready to put the, the motor and power supply in position. We'll move the tone arm wires around the back of the turntable. The motor switch best location is just pointed at 12 o'clock at the bottom of the, where the turntable sits. So and what we do just make sure the turntable at this point is in the position you want it on the rack, and then we position the motor so that the outside circumference of here matches that part of the chassis, just to make it look right. At this point, we need to level the rest of the turntable and set the suspension up, then we can put the drive belt on and we're pretty much there. So we'll be adjusting this part of the spring to bring the chassis up and down, and then we'll be turning the entire spring to set the, the spring into its most relaxed position. So currently, we have not a lot of gap under here. We're gonna adjust this gap so that from the underside of the chassis here to the top of those felt washers is between one and two millimeters. We'll do that all the way around. And then with the use of a level, we'll level the platter, which will mean just tweaking these slightly. So just by turning the knurled part of the top, tiny little adjustments just to level the platter. If you leveled the base right, and you've got the one to two millimeter gap, it's very little adjustment you'll need to level the rest of the turntable. You also wanna make sure that this, there's a gap between the underside of the most top plate and the chassis if this is up against here, then it's gonna um, foul it and you've, you've got too big a gap underneath your suspension. So that's a good indication that something's wrong within the suspension setup. So obviously we want to make sure that the turntable is level from left to right and also from front to back. That way we know the platter is level in all planes. So we do that, obviously adjusting these two for this, for the left to right. And then the rear suspension to bring that up or down to make sure it's level from front to back. Okay. So now we've got the, the, the platter nice and level, we now need to adjust these three springs so that they're in their most relaxed position. 
What that means is, is that the, the coils of the spring are sitting as concentric as possible to the hole in the chassis. So to do that, you need to view the hold assembly from above, look down, grasp the spring itself, and if you turn it anti-clockwise, you can keep turning it until you get it into a position where the coils look as centralized as possible. Do that on all three. You'll notice when you adjust these, it's now adjusted the chassis in relation to where the motor is sitting. So you can just tweak the motor so that it's the edges follow again. Sometimes you have to go around them twice because the altar in one can sometimes put one out ever so slightly. Once you get to this position or this point, the suspension is, is, is basically set up. You can keep tweaking that position for the spring to get it concentric and then you can try and get a, a pistonic bounce on the turntable. It's, it takes a lot of setup for that and it gives you a tiny, tiny amount of um, improvement in performance if you can get a pistonic bounce. But in reality, the actual pressure you have to put down, you never put it down completely vertical. So it's a very difficult setup to get right. Once you've got to the position we've got to now, I'd say you're pretty much set up on the suspension. Then fit the drive belt to the turntable. So just let it sit like that so it's not twisted. We're gonna go around the top portion of the pulley, that's the 33 pulley. So just pull it around the platter like that. You try not to twist the belt as much as you can. You'll always get a little bit of a twist in it, but what we don't want is it really twisted up because that can affect the way it runs around. Once it's on, give the platter a little bit of a spin and that will centralize the belt on the platter. We can now fit the three spring covers. These are a push fit. And they just literally push into the hole here. So once you've got them located, give them a push. Fingers underneath the chassis, thumbs above, and you can push it down so that it's nice and located all the way around. Just double check between the spring cover and the platter that you're not pinching the drive belt. If that's the case, then the spring cover's not completely flat. So now they're all located. You need to find a home on your rack for the orb controller, which is the power supply for the turntable. So the orb controller we're now going to put into position it's got a speed control switch on the front, an on and off switch on the underside. Um, this is to switch between 33 and 45. So we place this on the rack. Feed the wires out to the back of the, back of the equipment rack. Before you plug the power in, plug the motor in. So it's on a six pin DIN cable and there's a six pin socket which locates with a little notch in the plug. So once that's all pushed home, there's a little locking ring that just does up, stops it pulling out. So now all you need to do is plug the power lead in for the orb controller and the turntable is ready to turn. All we need to do now afterwards is to set your tone arm up with your preferred cartridge. So now we've got the turntable all set up, the next thing to do is to fit your cartridge. Today we're going to use a Michel Audio QSIS S cartridge, which is our own range of move, low output moving coil cartridges. Cartridge comes in a tin, you get a little set of um, tools, a stylus brush and a push on stylus guard. Now the first thing to do with the cartridge is to make sure that the cantilever assembly 
is still all intact. They're very delicate. It's extremely unusual for any of them to get damaged in transit, but it can happen. So we seal the cartridges in this box. It's a clear box, so you can visually look through, make sure it's all still intact. The little cantilever is pointing up um, and it's not skewed over to one side. The first thing to do once you get the cartridge out of the box, be extremely careful with, do not touch anywhere around the cantilever area. Hold the cartridge upside down, put it somewhere safe and get the tools and the stylus guard out of the bag. Now, because it's extremely delicate when fitting these, I suggest that you fit the cartridge, uh, stylus guard over the cartridge before you do any more fitting onto the tone arm. That way you don't run the risk of breaking it when you're doing it. So first thing, we've got four colors uh, of tone arm wire, which, and the colors match up to the four terminals on the back of the cartridge. These are a push fit, literally just push them onto the cartridge They should be a fairly tight fit. They shouldn't just fall off. If they are, this is a sprung um, assembly and you can just push it together with your fingers if you just need that little bit more grip. So once those connectors are all pushed on, use the two screws provided and the Allen key to just fit the cartridge onto the tone arm head shell. We provide an Allen key to do this. Now what I normally, the position I normally start is with the, the two screws in the same position in each slot in the head shell around the center hole so that you're in the, you're in the center of each slot. So once you've got the cartridge fitted to the head shell, as a starting position, make sure these screws are in the center of the slots and the head and the cartridge is fairly square in the head shell and just dress these wires so they make a nice little loop and they're not hanging down where they can touch the vinyl when it's playing. We'll align the cartridge later on um, but that's that's pretty much where you want it to be for the for the moment. We now need to fit the counterweight to the tone arm which is up the other end. The tone arm supplied with two counterweights. The smaller one is for cartridges that weigh between three and six grams and the larger one is for cartridges that are between 6 and 13 grams. If you do have an extra heavy cartridge, we can supply an even heavier weight, um, which can be bought at a later date. But this will cover pretty much most of the cartridges on the market. So for the, to, to today, the QCS s is 8.9 grams, so we'll be using the larger of the two counterweights. So to start putting this together, we unscrew the finger adjuster at the back. Loosen the grub screw in the top with the supplied Allen key and that slides off. This is called the slide bush. We then slide the counterweight onto the slide bush and there's a notch and the screw and what we do is we just by eye square that up so the notch is at 90 degrees to the edges of the weight. Match it up here and here, just so that the weight is nice and central to the, the slide bush. Hold the counterweight in place on the slide bush by just doing up the little grub screw in the, on the underside. The counterweight then slides onto the end stub and we screw the finger adjuster back on. So now we've got the counterweight in position, we need to set the weight, set the tracking force um, for the cartridge before we can do any more. This is done by first of all, setting the bias setting on the tone arm to zero. Make sure your finger, uh, the, the arm lift is in the up position. Remove the stylus guard from the cartridge and obviously be extremely careful not to touch any of the stylus assembly. Rest the arm on the arm lift 
And what we're looking to do is balance the arm at this point. So starting with the counterweight quite far back, you want to lower the arm lifter. And at this point you can see that the cartridge has lowered itself onto the platter. So the, the weight is too far forward. We lift the arm back up, wind the finger adjuster back a bit, move the counterweight back and lower. And as you can see, it's still touching the platter. So we go up again, a couple of turns back. And what we're looking for that for it to do is get the stylus so that it floats a millimetre or so above the platter. We want the arm to be relatively level, like that. Not touching the arm lifter. And if you just give it a little tap, we can see that it's floating. So the arm is in balance on the pivot. Once you're at that point, you can lock the arm into the, um, lock the arm into position, and then you can add the required amount of tracking force. Now, the finger adjuster has little dimples machined into the top of it, and there's a little line on the counter, on, on the, onto the slide bush. For each of those dimples, when you turn the finger adjuster clockwise, each dimple that passes the groove in the slide bush will add 0.1 grams of tracking force. The QCS S cartridge tracks at two grams, so we need to make 20 dimples pass that position. If you've got a set of st stylus scales, this is the best point to use them. But if you haven't, then you can just use the, the dimples. So once you've added the required amount of tracking force, just make sure the whole slide bush and counterweight assembly is pushed back against the finger adjuster. Get the counterweight as horizontal as possible with the arm and then just lock it in place using the allen key and the grub screw in the top of the counterweight in the top of the slide bush so now you've got the, the correct amount of tracking force set for the arm so now the counterweight is set we need to set the vta adjustment for the tone arm this is to ensure that the tone arm is pretty much level when it's playing first thing to do is put some vinyl on the turntable We need to put the arm lifter in the up position, take any stylus protection off, move the tone arm so it's roughly in the middle of the playing area and lower the tone arm onto the vinyl. You now need to get down horizontal with the, with the arm and the turntable and look at the gap between the vinyl and the arm. This is a tapered arm tube, so what you're gonna to have to be, imagine is a a line through the middle of the arm tube to the bearing position in relation to the top surface of the vinyl. Those need to, be, need to be parallel and that's why what we'll adjust using the VTA adjuster here. To adjust the height of the tone arm, first of all, once you're in this position, you look, imagine a line through the middle of the arm, because this is a tapered arm tube, um, in relation with the top of the vinyl. Those two lines need to be parallel. Get it to this point, have a look, see if the back of the arm needs to go either up or down. Park the tone arm on the rest and lock it in position. Then what we're going to do is loosen these three screws which are holding the arm in place and use this adjuster ring to move the arm up and down. So loosen those three screws, move the arm up and down, get it in position and then lock these three screws back off. For literally a few turns, you don't need to take the screws out, just a few turns. And then, so we can now see that the arm is loose. 
and we can spin the ring on there to either clockwise or anti-clockwise to either raise or lower the tone arm. Once you get it in the position where it's all level, lock those two screws back off, uh, three screws back off. And you're ready to go. The only thing that's left to do is to align the cartridge in the head shell. You'll do this using whatever tone arm alignment protractor you have been supplied with your tone arm. We've set the turntable up, we've set the tone arm up. The last thing to do is, is align the cartridge in the head shell. Um, to do this, you need to use either an aftermarket alignment protractor or the protractor that's supplied with your tone arm. So now we're all set up, we've got everything done, we've got the cartridge aligned. The only step left is to sit back and enjoy. Put some vinyl on, start the turntable playing, sit back and relax.